You guys ready to get bullish in silver and metals? We are seeing a lot of bullishness across commodities. As a matter of fact, I've just released a video on uranium ETFs, and we're seeing the same action across lots of commodities, not just metals or even radioactive metals. We're seeing that in oil. That's probably the most uh, household thing that's going up. Everyone's noticing the gas price is going up, and there's a lot of talking heads on the news, giving their own takes on what's causing it. Something, 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 Russia. I don't know. I just follow the charts. You can use uh, whatever mental gymnastics to explain what's happening based on the news, but I have been led astray by that. Regardless, we may have a setup in place. We've been holding for a long time across metals, not just silver, but gold as well. They generally correlate, and we're seeing this tremendous spike. And if I look at just pure silver itself, silver futures, it looks corrective to me. But that is not all. It doesn't mean that they don't, we don't have a good setup in place. And I shifted the two ETFs that I like to cover, SIL and SILJ. We've got, some, we've got something to keep an eye on here. So SIL is the Global X Silver Miners ETF. It is one of the miners that I like to follow for silver. SILJ is the Prime Junior Silver Miners ETF. I've done videos on these before, but once the setup broke, I took a bit of a hiatus back in the game now. So we're going to see what we got here. If I get the setup I want, there will definitely be option trades that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I'll also be playing SLV, so that's something I may cover in future videos, but here's what we got here. Long, big picture, long term, we had a multi-decade bottom seemingly in silver along with the miners, which of course all correlate, even though they all follow their own individual patterns. That was the everything crash of March 2020, and we were looking at this as a third wave top in SIL as well as silver and gold and GDX, all the big metals ETFs, and we've had a very long very agonizing pullback. A lot of metal traders have lost hope, and that is exactly what pullbacks do. This is how it is to trade metals and commodities. Nothing happens. You basically grind away, and then suddenly things catch fire, and uh, well, you got to chase it from behind. Sil J, we had two alternate patterns because I saw this secondary high back here in February of 2021 as potentially five up. If that's the case, then this would very convincingly be a second wave down, and that would be the preferable setup before you go long. Whether it's a second wave or a fourth wave down doesn't really make much difference because commodities are famous for having fifth wave extensions, which means that they often exceed your standard 0.618 max target. You'll often see these things run to the 0.764 or the 1.0 extension, maybe even higher. Fifth wave extensions are bonkers. I talk about these in cryptos all the time as well. So those are things, uh, anything that's based mainly on fear, fear of missing out, or uh, geopolitical fear, whatever you want to call it. Often you see those fifth of extensions in the rallies. So short term, what does this bounce actually look like? Well, it looks like a lot of things, and some of them are good, some of them are bad. Can this be five up? Sure. You can make out one, two, three, four, five, and you can see the internal patterns have a lot of switchbacks in them. So this would be best identified as an expanding diagonal, five up, Diagonals are not the most reliable things. So we need to see this thing pull back correctively and we're seeing it already. We have one wave down, we're in a bounce, presumably a B wave. I expect to see a sharp C wave down and then we need to see some bullish rallying action relatively soon, at which point it may be prudent to start loading up on uh, at least non leverage positions. Leverage might wanna wait a bit more uh, for a bit better of a setup. SILJ, I guess it's a diagonal. I can't see this being an ABC up, but it doesn't look like an impulse either. So it's a one, two, three, four, five. Sure. As a matter of fact, you could just check out those Fibonacci internal proportions. If we do that, well, I mean, that's probably not the first wave there. If we move up to this little peak here as our first wave and we play that thing, whoa, that got confusing fast. Let me delete this out. Here we go. We look at it this way. That's somewhat convincing. We've got our third wave spike right into the standard expectation. And we have what we call the throw over an ending diagonal, or in this case, a leading diagonal, in which case you have your first wave top here, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, everything falls within the channel. And then your fifth wave spikes well past the channel trend line. So this is a, these are classic signs that we have a leading diagonal in place, at least in SILJ. So promising development. I'm gonna take a look at silver real quick, just to see what we got there. Um, obviously this is future, so I'd have to zoom out a bit more, but you can convince me that's a diagonal. And finally, I look at GDX, which is probably the biggest asset of all these ETFs. 
and um, pretty much the same story there. So we got ourselves something going on here. Um, I almost want to look at COPEX, but it's following its own pattern. So I'll, that'll be covered in future videos. I don't think I've done anything on COPEX yet. So watch out for those. Could be some interesting stuff going on there. So big picture, what am I expecting to see here? Let's switch back over to SIL, S-I-L. Whether it's a second wave or a, or a fourth wave, fifth wave coming, there is some upside left. You look at this projection. We do have what looks like a leading diagonal. We need to see this pullback and we need to see some bullish action. Once we get past this peak when we're rallying, that might be a good time to uh, start loading in. I know I got these old purple uh, numerals and things in here that are no longer valid. Actually, let me re-factor those things in. We expect a pretty sharp pullback. And then our third wave could go about yay high, so on and so forth. And um, I would actually project a good bit higher than this. Maybe we go all the way up there. So we're gonna wanna see a bit more action. This is our high risk play. I would not recommend going leveraged yet if you're gonna go long. I am not, again, I'm gonna sit and wait. This might take a few more days, a few more weeks to develop. Definitely gonna have more videos covering what's going on because we got a lot, a long way to go. We're sitting at 30, about $38. This thing would probably hit $66 minimum. It could take a while. So that's the disadvantage. You might have to buy options farther out or wait a long time if you're doing bound leveraged. The advantage, however, is that we've seen very little downside action. Things have been kind of going sideways in the middles. So your uh, implied volatility is very low. Option contracts are pretty dang cheap. At least they were when I looked at SLV contracts. So that could play in our favor. We may have some pretty lucrative returns just because of that low volatility right now. Um, SILJ, same kind of thing. It looks like a cluster over here. Let me clear that up. I don't know where my number two went. It's somewhere, but I'm going to assume our one is here. Three is going to be somewhere up there. Four here and our fifth wave could end up in the $25 range. We're seeing at $14.75. And of course, these numbers are lower. The return in absolute terms is lower, but that'll be reflected in the contracts, the option contracts, the calls should be a good bit cheaper. At the end of the day, these should all have the same return potential if you're going leveraged with contract option contracts. If you're going uh, long with non-leveraged, again, not a bad time to possibly accumulate. I don't know if you guys are still hodling since our... Uh, well, since we're expecting a breakout way back here, way back here, we've been in a consolidation for well over a year. So it'll be exciting to see the metals move and not just silver and gold, as I mentioned, covering uranium, COPEX. I don't know if there's a plutonium, plutonium ETF out there. Let me know. Maybe I'll cover that as well. These um, commodities all seem to follow closer, follow more closely with each other because they have their own sentiment driven by different factors. They often diverge from the stock market, from cryptos. We're going to see what happens. We're going to have a lot more updates on this. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss this. Again, I cover lots of things with Elliott Waves, not just cryptos. And if you enjoyed my video, don't forget to give me a like. Till next time, thank you for watching and happy trading.